so I guess we can uh, we 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 could talk about that. Uh, plus your plus uh, you 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 do the fitness thing too, right? You know, you cook in your truck and all like that. Oh yeah, I do nothing but cooking in the truck. Um, from cooking to working out, pretty much just trying to stay as in uh, good of condition as I can while I'm out on the road. All right, that'll work. That'll work. All right, so we about to uh, we about to get this started, man. We about to get this started. Yo, what's up? All right. e- what's up, everybody? This is lockout, man, and I am super tired, super tired, but not too tired enough to get these podcast interviews ready for you guys. Whew. Let's go ahead and get me up on that picture. There we go. There we go. What's up, everybody? Lockout men in the truck. Not on the 30. I am on the 10 because I am done for this evening for this podcast interview for you tonight. This uh, young man reached out to me via, well, he reached out to me in my channel. And then he reached out to me in the email. And now we're together like bread and butter. You know what I'm saying? Jelly and jelly and peanut butter. Uh, oil and vinegar. Well, no, nah, that, that's not a good analogy, oil and vinegar. <laughs> oh, man. I want you guys to put your hands together for my man. Bees Knees Trucking. What's going on, bro? What's up, baby boy? How you feel tonight? How you feel tonight, man? Where you where you at right now? Oh, uh, man. I'm over here in, uh, Ray, I just got into Oklahoma. Let me see. I'm uh, in Gooman, Gumman, or, yeah, Gumman, Oklahoma. All right. So all right, right there on the Oklahoma, border of Oklahoma and Texas, and colorado area okay okay that's what's up man that's what's up well we got something we got something in common already i am on as soon as i drop this load off in the morning i will be leaving back out saturday night heading up to oklahoma so yeah oh yeah oklahoma is (laughs) my. i love it i love it out here man yeah oklahoma is my spot bro i mean well not my spot to live but my favorite place to go to is over there at windstar i'm a uh I'm a uh, poker player, and I like to stop up in there. Oh and play man, that's poker. like, yeah, yeah, it's like one of the uh, biggest casinos, I believe. It's the yes, wor- it uh, is the it's world the biggest casino in the United States. Yes, it is. It's the world's largest casino, and I'm like, and and when you walk in that mug, man, I mean, if 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 you're a walker like myself, you will appreciate that place because to get from one end to the other. Is at least a mile, at least, oh, yeah. at least a yeah. mile. So if yeah, you it's huge. if you walk <clears throat> like the trucking part, the truck parking, which is another great thing over there. It is it is plenty of truck parking over there. So if you guys is ever in Thackersville, Oklahoma, and y'all need somewhere to park, man. Windstar would be the place for you guys. But if you you walk and- from the truck parking into the casino and walk all the way around to the other end and then walk all the way back you will clear a mile in that bad boy oh yeah it's i mean that place is huge and it's right before right before the uh dot so uh yes sir (laughs) yes sir it's a good spot to shut down it is definitely a good spot to shut down especially if you uh trying to avoid that Shut down right quick, wait till they close, and then you can cruise right past it, man. That's crazy. That yeah. is crazy. Yeah, that DOT station, they don't play around, man. They uh No, nah, they don't. Ooh, they're gonna pull you in. No, nah, they don't, man. They don't they don't BS over there, man. All right, for everybody that don't know who you are, man, introduce yourself and let them know what you're about, bro. All right. Appreciate the shout out. And uh yeah, uh my name's Shane. Uh uh I have the, my channel's Bees Knees Trucking, and uh, I pretty much, you know, I started going into about Hertzbach and the orientation, and this is like my my first channel I've ever had, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, the first video, very crappy, but um, I have received a lot of uh, compliments on because of the information. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, 
So I just build the channel from there, and I do a healthy trucker. Um, I, I tend to do that at least once a week where I just go over eating healthy while you're out on the road. Um, and my diet really consists of a lot of um, uh, whole-based foods and plant protein. Now, I'm not a complete vegetarian as I love meat. I just really slim down the amount of meat uh, that I intake, especially within that week. So I may eat meat like once or twice in a week. Other than that, um, I'm eating just straight whole base and plant protein. I normally okay. start off the morning with that uh, breakfast shake, so I'll go in that. But that that's a little bit about that. And then I also go into like my driving adventures, anything that I do out there on the road. Um, I just started this little vlog thing that I have, and uh, you know, and, and I really like doing that. I really like doing that on the channel. Is um, you know, I'm working on another one as we speak, and uh, okay. it was my adventure to Denver, Colorado. Okay. And uh, yeah, so it's just you know, I, I bring up Hertzbach and I bring up the benefits of about being with them and um, how they treat you as a lease operator. And uh, this is my first lease, and but All right, I'm we'll, here to say, like the crush. We'll, we'll we'll get into that. We'll get into that. We'll 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 talk. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk Hertzbach because Hertzbach. I called. Uh, I called Hertzbach in one of my um. In one of my seasons of make the call videos, and uh, yeah, 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 and yeah, I, and I, I talked to them. I, I talked to them, and come to find out that they 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 just do, they they rarely have company drivers. They they concentrate more on leasing out their trucks than the company side or company driver side. All right, man. Well, uh, let's let's talk about this nutrition thing, man. We um, you know, All we right. truck we truck drivers out here, and you know, we got. You know, this this is a this is a bad uh, career for truckers that's trying to stay fit because there's there's really nothing good out here for us to eat, man. And by you being and by you, um, you know, fully cooking in the truck and everything, what what made you what, what made you make the change? What was what was the change um, that that made you start? The change. The change was actually um it was it was actually during an orientation with Hertzbach. Like um, you know, previous I've uh you know when I got into trucking, you know, I started realizing you know I was gaining weight, especially after I got done with the local delivery. And um, you know, because if you're local and you're doing that delivery and you're offloading that product, I mean, it's it's yeah, you're gonna stay in shape, not a big deal. But I was drinking, like, these energy drinks and drinking just all this bad stuff, not even watching the sugar intake. So on the orientation, they have a uh, health wellness class. And I met this uh, guy named Sergio Rojas. Um, he has a website out there. It's uh, Vitality by Sergio. And um, he's really big known, especially in the Chicago area. But um, he now uh, works with the company, and he has his own business sort of with the company and he just does wellness and he did a class for like the whole morning for like the uh, four hours long and he talked about just um the truck driver health ratio like uh like their longevity on their life and just uh what you eat is actually plays a big part in your mental role um just i mean it's more than just like takes a toll on just your physical uh body you know and if you start um, eating right and eating foods, um, you know, in this, in this category, you will start to notice, like, you don't really need those energy drinks. You don't really need, uh, all this fast food and, and whatever to get your so-called protein, right? There's other ways to get protein. That's one of the biggest, uh, things that people just misconstrued a lot is just like, they think in order to get protein, they got to eat meat in order to, eat, in order to get calcium, they have to, uh, or vitamin D, they have to drink milk, and it's just like, no, there are other options, and um, I also have stomach issues, too, so uh, not to go real too personal into it, um, I just, you know, really bad stomach issues, and so with him going over the information, listing all the health benefits, and why to, to eat this kind of way, and not only do this diet, but his diet, you know, not don't treat it like a diet, but treat it like, you know, this is a brand new lifestyle. Like this is a lifestyle change and look at it from that aspect. And when you're doing it, like conscious eat, like know what you're eating, know the amount of what you're eating and just, you know, pretty much take your time and, and 
just think, you know, what you're putting into your body and what you're consuming. And when you start doing that and you start looking at what you're, you know, incorporating into this diet, you start, you know, not even wanting those energy drinks or that fast food or, you know, whatever else. And by doing so, I've actually helped my, um, my stomach, my, my stomach uh, issues a lot, a lot. And, it's, uh, you know, I don't have a lot of those issues any anymore because of it. It's like, it, it's like change. It's like changing the habit, you know, it's it's like yep. you know it's it's like changing a habit you know a lot of guys get used to get used to putting putting the wrong kind of foods in their bodies and their bodies is like is like talking to them but they just not listening to them you know what I'm saying yeah it's like it's like me yeah exactly it's it's like me like my doctor uh like I said about a couple of years ago I was di I was I was diagnosed to be a type two diabetic and I'm sitting here like. Oh, I, I'm man. not. A, I'm not a. I'm looking at my doctor like I'm not a diabetic. What you? What you talking about? You, you know, <laughs> he pricked my finger and all like that. And I and I explained to him, you know, well, when I went to when I went to my DOT, uh, the my DOT uh, physical. Yeah, yeah, when I took my DOT physical, that's when you know you you do the pee in the cup test. You know what I'm saying? You pee in the cup. Yep. And they can yep. do, you know, they can do your sugar test that way. For some odd reason, mine read off the chart. So they came back with the with the finger prick. And my my blood sugar was like about 214. But I told them that, well, that was because, you know, I was at the casino the day before. I drunk a lot of orange juice and Sprite. That was my thing back in the day. Orange juice and Sprite. Yeah. Orange juice yeah. mixed with Sprite. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't mess with the the energy drinks because the energy drinks accelerate my heart. And and it was in the one night I was driving. This was before I got into trucking. I was driving in one night. Needed to stay awake, of course. And I went on here, got with that five hour energy, and maybe about a half an hour later, I was feeling my heart like boom 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 hitting up on my chest and i was damn yeah, near, yeah. i was damn near afraid to go to sleep because i was like if i go to sleep i'm not going to get up and and you know i i was afraid of all that so i never mess with the energy drinks but when i after i got finished with the dot uh the uh dot physical she came back to me she refused to give me my um uh, she refused to give me my card. Not didn't even give oh. me a three. Didn't even give me a three month card. Like she didn't give me no shit. Kidding, just straight out. Straight said out. No. Yeah. Straight <laughs> out. No. And I was like, uh, okay. <clears throat> so what I did was, I went on a water regimen for a couple of days. Called up my uh called up my doctor. Went to him, and uh yeah. He, he came out. He was like, yeah, you, you're a type 2 diabetic because I did get it down from 214 to like 2, I mean, 214 to like 160. But it was still, it was still high, but it, it was manageable. That's what he told me. Yeah. So being a type yeah. 2 diabetic, such as myself, of course, I got to eat well and do exercise. But doing, but being the truck driver, it's hard to get that exercise in. How do you manage to get the exercise in, bro? Um, it's first thing. What I do is when I wake up, I I always give myself time. Um, and that's what I, that was like the hardest part was, like, how am I gonna fit all this time? I got to do this, this, and this, and this. And it's like, well, once you start breaking down, it's it's really not that, you know, complicated, you know, you, if you're, if you're doing everything the right way, you shut down. Um, let's start from the morning. I'll get up about an hour and a half before I'm going to be cruising down that road. And that first 30 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and get a workout in. And I have resistant bands. I also have a dumbbell and um, I'll, I'll go outside depending on the weather, uh, what, what it's like outside the truck and do some push ups or, or whatever. And, and then try to get like a morning walk in just enough to stretch my body, do a couple squats, just get everything flowing right. And um, so I, I, I do that first thing when I wake up and, and 
I started making that a habit, making it do it every time, every day. And eventually it just became, you know, like clockwork to where I'm not even like second oh, nature, man, dreading it sort of. Yeah. It's just second nature. It's all and second uh, nature. I realized, yeah. And I realized by doing that, like, I just have a fresh start in the morning. I, I feel, you know, well, and, and I have this energy about me that, um, you know, I'm not feeling like droggy or, you know, just trying to get up. You know, you, you, I spent that time to get up already, did my little workout, ate my little uh, breakfast smoothie that I normally have in the morning and, and take my vitamins and, and everything else and then go about my day. And it just, it, it makes a complete, complete difference. And, and driving and um and then typically my 30 minute i'll do like another walk outside the truck and everything um not really a lot of time it just really depends what I, what all i'm trying to fit in that 30 minutes but i'll at least do some whether it's walking i'll park at the very end of the truck stop like as far back as i could go and then and walk just, all so the way up to, walk, the, to the store yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, I'm not going to be that guy that's going to park, like, in the front or try to get the best park. No, I'll park all the way in the back just so it forces myself to, to have to do that walk. That's what I and, like. Um, I, I, I'm the same way. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I, yeah. you know, I, a lot of people, you know, except for except for the women, you know. For the women, yeah, if you can find somewhere to park in yeah. the front, go ahead. But me... I, I I don't mind parking in the back. I, I I I find that it's easy parking in the back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it is easy parking yeah, in the yeah. back for real. I mean, but yeah. for you ladies, yeah, definitely you want to park up. You know, for safety's sake, because yeah. you know, being yeah, that for ladies, it's, right? Yeah, being that you know, us guys, you know, we we could park just around. Anywhere, but as for you ladies, yeah, for safety's sake, yeah, that, yeah I, I do yeah. the same thing, bro. I, I would get out, I will walk around my truck, I will walk to the store, I will walk back. Um, the only thing, the only issue with me is, is that you know, maybe I gotta just cut back on my diet, you know what I'm saying? Because you know, I, I, yeah, you know, I don't cook in the truck, I, I tried to do that. I tried to do the cooking thing in the truck, but it never worked out for me because, of course, I don't have, of course, I don't have a refrigerator. I do have a cooler, uh, but okay. I do have a yeah. cooler, but, of course, it don't keep the important food cold or, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Cooler is a little bit hard to manage <clears throat> the temperature for those food, and depending what you well, you get to, I mean, I mean, if you get in somewhere, it's going to be open or whatever, and you put it in a cooler with ice, it's like, eh, it's probably going to get soggy or, or, or whatever the case is. So it's a little bit, a little bit more difficult, you know, when you're working with the cooler. Right. So if you have a refrigerator, <laughs> it's a lot more easier to, to, to fill the refrigerator up and you're able to, you're able to do it. So being that you cook on a, yeah. on on a on the truck, man, what what kind of what kind of foods we be eating? What what what, what you be cooking up, bro? <laughs> what, what's for dinner tonight? Uh, well, if you, you already had it. <laughs> well, I already had it, and what I had was uh, it was like a Mexican style quona, and it had like quona, um, which is like a uh, it's pretty much like a seed, right? And and uh, you, they take that seed and that seed. You know, you, you rent, you have to rinse it off because uh, it, it does have a chemical on it that naturally comes from that plant. And it, it doesn't hurt you. It may upset your tummy, but um, if you don't rinse it, you know, it, it just has a very distasteful taste. And uh, so you got to you rinse it off and get it going and then um, add your, you know, I, add, I have seasonings on the truck. I have, you know, just about everything. I, I like flavor in my food. Mm -hmm. And um who does it? So I take that and then get some corn. Yeah, I mean, come on, you know. And I'm from Louisiana, so it's like oh, you I got all. Have, yeah, you have to have all the flavors if you did, if you're down yeah. there. Yeah, you definitely yeah, yeah. gotta have the flavors. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, so uh, I take that and then the corn, and I make kind of like a Mexican rice, but a Mexican, but with quona, which is a lot healthier than rice itself. And if you're gonna eat rice, eat that brown or wild rice. So I had that right. And I take that, and I have this uh, what's also called uh, meatless beef. And believe it or not, it, it tastes just like beef, it, but it's a uh, soy protein, and it, it's mixed with uh, some other uh, stuff in it, but it's a whole-based uh, food item 
Um, and I mix a little bit of that in it. And then normally I'll get like a, uh, some tomatoes, like the Rotel tomatoes in the can, and I'll, I'll dab that up in it and uh, just kind of get a real good Mexican flair. And that's, I mean, that's what I had tonight. And, uh, man, you're you know, a real so, Chef like, Gordon like up that. in this piece, man. <laughs> I mean, uh, well, yeah. you got, dude, what, what, what you cooking all this on, man? You got, you got a, a whole oven in the back of your truck, man? What's up? Uh, <laughs> hey, this man making gourmet wish, meals up in this piece. <laughs> oh, man, I, I wish I had a oven, but uh, no, I just have this uh, 700 watt microwave and uh, like a little hot plate, you know, and um, that's that's pretty much all you really need. You don't have to get like, you know, there's people that have those air fryers and that's good and that's dan you know, fine dandy, but I don't really, the, the items I eat, I don't really have to have that type of equipment. Um, because I just, that my diet is just, it's, it's really, when you look at it and you start doing a lot of research, you're just eating simple food. It, it's just simp down to like its simplest form and try to incorporate a lot of like greens, a lot of broccoli, top or, you know, your kale, your spinach. And, uh, you know, you have to be a little bit careful of the spinach because, um, you know, it does have, uh, that one, uh, natural ingredient that's in it. Um, but you know, you know, I, I incorporate a lot of greens, and a lot of those greens are what they call super greens, and that's where you get your your protein, your iron, all your pretty much a lot of your nutrients. Um, but I also take nutrients on top of that, like my B12s and my B6s, because a lot of your uh, B12s, you know, that obviously comes from meat, like a source of actually meat protein. So um, without eating a lot of meat. I, I intake those those nutrients and if, if you don't you'll find yourself just very like you'll be driving you'll just get your body just breaks down on you like you just had like no sleep at all and uh so vitamins like if you know my suggestion if you're going to switch this diet you really have to get the vitamins and you have to take them if not your body's going to be completely thrown off maybe not at first but within that about two weeks in, your body's going to start shutting down on you because it's not getting those dire nutrients that it that it desperately needs. How do you feel so, about um, how how do you feel about these truckers out here that that that's that are that that are overweight? I mean, I mean, I'm I, I'm surprised that a lot of them are able are even able to get their DOT uh, medical cards. Yeah, it's. It's it's surprising, and I blame it, really. I blame it on, it's the lack of knowledge, right? So a lot of these trucking companies, and I've been, you know, with a few, and they don't really, you know, they, they, they talk about everything else except for, you know, how, how to eat when you're out there on the road. So when you're out there, you're just thinking, oh, man, I'm hungry. Let me stop in this Burger King, or I'm hungry. Let me stop in this TA and go sit at that country restaurant that they have and spend 50 bucks or whatever. And, and so not only are you spending like a lot of money, but you're just eating unhealthy items and a lot of the like fast food, which everybody knows, like you eat one, one meal at, at Burger King or wherever you're going to get all your calories within that one meal. So it's like, you just ruined your whole day. And, you know, not to talk about the, the salt content, the fat content and everything else. And then on top of that, you're going to be drinking the sodas in the truck and then drinking, you know, eating the bag of chips and drinking the energy drinks, which have, you know, sucralose and sucralose is just like, eh, you know, it's, it's really not good for you. And um, so, you know, my feeling on that is just like to get back to it is the lack of I, I believe it's just the lack of knowledge that the other truck drivers have that are suffering with being that much overweight and in reality you know, they're, they're doing themselves a disservice because they're, they're just, they're hindering their body, hindering their body. They're getting bigger, getting bigger, they're not incorporating a, a workout. You know, they're just sitting behind that wheel and, and eventually their body is just going to break down. That's why the life expectancy for a truck driver is only in their sixties, only in their sixties. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> and that's, that is not a, that is that's not a shocking. long time. Yeah, that's that's a that's, yeah. that's kind of shocking and scary at the same time. Me, like I said, I yeah. I'm I'm doing I'm I'm working it, bro. I'm I'm working it. I'm I'm doing uh <laughs> I'm, I'm you know, baby steps. You know what I'm saying? Baby yeah. steps. It's, yeah. I, I you know, not yeah. not shocking the body all the way, but baby steps, you know, like I said, I <laughs> 
I, I change I, I change up. I drink water. I do drink Gatorade, but it's zero. The Gatorade zero. I made sure that it don't have sugar in it. Excuse me. I made sure that it don't have yeah. uh, sugar in it. Oh, yeah, Gatorade. Yeah, yeah. And all those drinks, not to cut you off, but a lot of those drinks are like good. You just have to be like those artificial sweeteners that they sometimes put in those no sugar drinks. You just have to be really careful about because those artificial sweeteners can um, cause, you know, they're a cancer causing products. So like when it comes to sugars, like I just use like stevia. Stevia is, a, is pretty much a leaf that is grounded down and, and it crystallizes, right? And it's a natural, it's a natural plant and, and, and it's whole form. There's no added stuff to it. And it's a, it's a good sugar intake. You know, if, if you want that sweetness, it, it's a great substitute. And, um, but yeah, you know, I totally agree with you. It's, baby steps when you first go into it you know and a lot i think the reason why a lot of people fail their diets is just like thinking like oh man i'm gonna do this 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 and this and then eventually those it, it breaks down to go back in their old habit and and i've done right. it you know and right. but with this diet i've really said you know what shane no we're gonna we're, we're gonna stop because gonna if stay. you don't you're just gonna you're gonna get out of control and you just gotta stick you know, with it being, yeah, and just have to stick with it. So I took a little bit of baby steps at first, and and then I said, you know what, I'm going to go to Walmart, and I'm just going to I'm going to shop like how they were telling me to, and I and I just got uh, snap peas and broccoli and spinach and kale, and I was grabbing cabbage and just grabbing just just all this stuff, uh, bananas, all your fruits, you know, fruits are really good, and people are like, oh, well, you're gonna get a lot of sugar from fruits, well. You know that that doesn't count, man. <laughs> right. I, I eat a lot of fruit. I, I eat count. a lot of grapes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oranges, apples, bananas. I, I eat bananas religiously. So you, so in your truck, yeah, man. Yeah. You, in, in your truck. So you, you do have a refrigerator, like a like a little. Yeah, I have a. Yeah, I have a little refrigerator. I have a microwave. I have a little hot plate, and um. <clears throat> And then, uh, obviously, you know, I have, uh, you know, my, my fruits and stuff and like my bananas, you know, the way I keep them fresh, I just put them in like a bag and I tie it up and I found like doing that, um, on like my apples and my bananas and stuff like that. It keeps for like a good week and it doesn't go bad in the truck. Did the, um, did the refrigerator so, come, uh, did, did the refrigerator come with the truck or did, this is your own refrigerator? No, the refrigerator came with the truck. Um, that was a that was a huge benefit. Um, is with prior companies, you know, I didn't have that, so I had an ice chest. I just had a cooler, and I would dump ice in it, and rent, then you know, get a bag of ice the next day, and keep doing that back and forth. So I was really fortunate uh, that this company provides, you know, these these coolers and and all the trucks. Okay. So, so before before you started uh before you started your fitness uh journey, everybody calls it that. What what was your weight? <laughs> what was the weight that you started and what's the weight where you at now? Uh my weight when I started was 250 and I'm currently at 220. Oh um, man, congratulations, and I lost, bro. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, I, thanks. Congratulations. And, uh, my weight size was uh 40 three and now i'm down to 38 wow and 38 honestly is starting to get big on me so it's like i'm 220 but my waist is really uh taking a cut on it well you know i'm i'm holding you know back then before i got into trucking uh and i let it myself go a little bit i was touching i was touching 299 at one point and then uh i just started I, I just started making changes. Then I went down to, I went down to 280. Uh, then I went down to 260, and then I got down to 250. And I've been, and I've been holding between 250, yeah. <laughs> between 250 and 244. So I've been holding yeah. between between those two. So I I said to myself, what? I said to myself, if as as long as I can hold that then I'm doing good, you know? So that's why I said yeah, I change, yeah. I change what I eat. I change, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I change what I eat. I change what I, what, what I do. I get a little bit more exercise in before I got into trucking. I was, I was in the gym damn near every day, every morning, 
half an hour. My motto yeah. back my motto <laughs> back then was uh, committed to fitness. And I, I would always yeah. say that yeah. you can find 30 minutes. You can find 30 yeah. minutes out of the day. If you can find 30 minutes, then take advantage of it. I still take advantage of yeah. it. I went over to Planet Fitness last night. So I got a I got a Planet Fitness card for being over the road. But I haven't been hitting my Planet Fitnesses because majority of them don't have adequate truck parking and I'm not trying to yeah, not trying man. to get a boot on the truck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that's sometimes a downfall with uh you know, having a membership and then, you know, you're in trucking and then it's like, eh, these, these places can't fit a, a, you know, a 53 foot trailer along with a sleeper. You know, it's, exactly. it's not going to work it's, out. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> not going to work out, man. What kind of tips, what, what, what kind of tips that you can give these, uh, these new Jack truckers for, uh, for keeping up with they keeping up with the good health, man? Uh, some of the tips, man, just if, if you're starting <coughs> trucking, right, and you're getting into the business, um, just start, start making the good habits now because you don't want to get five, ten years down the road and you start off with bad habits, just eating out constantly, not working out, just going from driving, sleeping, driving, sleeping, you know, and, and then next you know, you're just, you, you lost yourself. You really did. You lost yourself. And that plays a, a big toll on on your on your mental stability out here. And, and being your mental stability is play, plays you know that's that's a big thing out here. So um, tip is just get in the truck and, and incorporate you know a healthy eating style. I'm not saying to go with the diet I'm on, but just limit you know do find what you can eat in the truck, something healthy, the tuna packets. Um, you know, you can get these tuna packets. You can get the tuna in the can if you want. You you know, you can get yourself a little uh, a, a smoothie. You know, um, get yourself a blender and, and Nutribullet. You know, that's what I have, and, and blend you up a smoothie in the morning. You know, just something. Get some. Uh, incorporate these healthy foods and 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 incorporate the workout. Stay on the good habits because. You know, you're going to find yourself getting a truck and you're going to find these, you know, other truckers. I don't, I'm not talking, you know, I don't want to talk bad about some, but, you know, they're, sometimes they steer these young guys in the wrong direction. And, and next, you know, they, they find themselves just just doing the wrong things and not doing the right thing and, and not eating the right stuff. And, and, you know, and so it's just to stay on track, stay true to yourself and, and if you don't want to die, you know, in your 60s, if, if you want to have a good mental stability out here and not be in a form of depression, you know, then then eat eat right and don't be snacking. You know, try to limit your snack intake while you're driving. You know, always that's why our conscious eating comes into place, where you're consciously thinking what you're putting into your body, right? So, um, you know. That I, I, you know, if I snack, I'm eating almonds or some for nuts or, or dried fruit, you know, something along those lines, um, a banana, you know, whatever. And by doing so, I still limit, though, my, my intake, my portion intake, because the, the, even the nuts and the seeds, are, they're really good for you. But, that you know, it's a healthy fat, but you don't want to eat too much of it. So you just have to control your portions, kind of slow, you know. Instead of going into it and going, you know, uh, going fast and just and trying to knock out, get these miles so you can have this good paycheck, just actually just take a step back and and just slow it down just a tad bit, a tad bit. And you'll you'll find yourself that you're able to just make time for certain stuff instead of giving an excuse. Well, I don't have time. I have to do this. My company wants me to do that. And it's like. Just you take know, uh, know what, know just, what. Just take time for yourself, pretty much. Exactly. Just take, take time, time for, for yourself, yourself and, and get yourself in a, a good habit. Get okay. up early. Don't sleep in until the ten hour mark and, and then and then get up and then find yourself in a rush and then that's when you know you're gonna get a quick thing to eat inside and uh, uh whatever else exactly. and you know just yeah, make time, get get the right amount of sleep. That's another one, sleep deprivation. You know, just get get a, get a right amount of sleep. I'm not saying, you know, oh, you have to get 10 out. No, get, get you know, I, I averagely get about, you know, between five, six, 
depending if I'm working on a YouTube video, you know, and that's that's a hobby of mine. So, uh, yeah, that's so, a, know, that's, that's a hobby. Of, that's on, a hobby but... of everybody, and a lot of people, a lot of people don't really <laughs> don't understand. You know, I I got a lot of I got a lot of backlash from a, a lot of my past subscribers because majority of them subscribed for the way I was editing my videos back in the day. You know, I used to do a lot yeah. of recording and then edit, but they didn't they, they don't understand to do uh, a 10, 15, 20 minute uh, YouTube video <laughs> takes about damn near eight hours you know what i'm saying and i'm like yeah man, i'm yeah you know what what i'm gonna do spend you know they, they they was like well you could spend like a couple of hours a day and just release it once you know once a week yeah that's good consistency but you know you want to you you it, it's it just takes too long being especially being <laughs> a, a a solo truck driver you know it's, you, you gotta figure YouTube video or get some sleep. Sleep is gonna win. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sleep is gonna win. Yeah, all I mean, the time. eventually, that's that's what it comes down to. Being out here on your own, and if you're a YouTube creator, I my hats off to you because you really, you know, you know, a lot of people do it because it's a hobby. They they like doing it. They want to inform the people out there of what's really, you know. That's why I do it. What's that, that, really involved in trucking? That's why I do. It. I, I do this. I, I do this as a hobby. It's not a. It's it's not making yeah. me money now. If you guys want to send me money, y'all yeah. know how to do it with the links. <laughs> but I'm just saying, as far as trying to get paid and all like that, because a lot of a lot of YouTubers, a lot of truck driver YouTubers, they get into this YouTube field and like. Oh, okay. Well, I'm a superstar now. I, I don't have to. I, I don't need. I'm. I'm. I'm above you peons now. I don't have time for yeah, you. See, man, nah. YouTube ain't paying yeah. you all like that. You. You forgot. You. <laughs> nah, man. You forgot the reason. <laughs> you forgot the reason why you started the YouTube page. You're a truck driver, bro. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And some. Stay, and stay some. True. I mean, be about your business. Right. Be about your business. And man. some truck drivers out here, they they, you know, they 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 leave the truck driving field and think that they can be, you know, do everything else and you know do it on YouTube and all like that, but don't realize <laughs> that, don't realize nobody ain't watching you because the real reason people watching you is because you is in the truck. Now you coming back to the yep. truck like. I'm I'm back at the truck and then everybody in everybody in the comment section like, Oh, welcome back. We miss you. Yada yada yada. Why why y'all wasn't watching him while he was, you know, doing other things. But doing yet, whatever else. Yeah. Right. But yet get back in the truck. Oh, er, everybody wanna everybody wanna watch him now. All right, man. So um yeah. all right, so let's talk about uh let's talk about leasing for uh for a little bit before I before you get up out of here. So how long you been working at Hirschbach? All right. I've been here for thirteen weeks now. Thirteen, oh, th uh, thirteen weeks. Okay. So are, are you, are you a new jack in the game, or how long you been driving all together? No, I've been driving since uh, two thousand and sixteen. Oh, okay. So okay. I still consider myself not like you know, obviously you know only four years, but with, with a good you know sense of the trucking industry. So to speak, you know. So, so where you not one of these guys that be like, oh, well, I got four years in, and I know, I know everything there is to know about trucking. And it's like, right. nah, man. <laughs> nah, if the, here's the thing: if you if you a driver that thinks you know everything about trucking, it's time to hang up the keys. <laughs> yeah. It's time to hang them up. Because yeah. if you if you sit there and be like, yo, I know everything about trucking. You need to hang up them keys, bruh. So did you so how how did you go back to how how did you go back and obtaining your uh CDLs? Um I obtained my CDL actually uh since I was prior military. I got my uh I received my CDL through the JB Hunt Hunt's uh Heroes program. Um and uh I went through their program, went to school in uh Arkansas, which was uh pretty cool actually um you know uh i did the schooling there and it was about 30 days jb hunt paid me it was about what 500 bucks a week while in the program okay. um and then uh yeah and then they uh you know obviously the hotel had the breakfast and then lunch was at the uh 
kind of at the school sometimes, and then dinner was on your own. So, uh, but regardless, it was a nice hotel. It was, the uh, school was nice. Um, the instructors, I'm actually still friends with a couple of them on my own. You know, how, on my how many, uh, Facebook how, and everything. How many? How many? How, how many was in the program? And who was the last people standing? How many was the last people standing? It was, uh, let me see, it was about 30 people in the program. And actually, <laughs> all 30 uh, of us uh, made we, it through. We went through. Now, there was, yeah, made it through. There's actually two of them that had, a, that had to retest. They were allowed to retest. Okay. Um, because they failed the driving part. Right. But uh, they, the, the state guy um, allowed them to take the test again the following day. Okay. Or not the following day, but I think it was like two days or something like that. And then they passed. So, and uh, there was only like two of them. But... So, with J- so, you, so you started with J.B. Hunt. Did they, did you, did you, how long you was with J.B. Hunt? Did you have an obligation to them being that they paid for your license? No, actually, um, I used my GI Bill, so it came out of my GI Bill. If, uh, you know, you're a veteran out there, listen to this, you know, your GI Bill pays for a lot. And uh, you can actually have them pay for your CDL training, so you do not have to sign a contract with okay. with that company. Yeah, so uh, that, that's what I did, and um, actually the, uh, the CDL program or the GI Bill program paid you a also a little bit of extra money each month uh because it was considered on the job training okay so that was that was actually up. pretty nice yeah. all right so yeah. J- so did you did you rock out with jb hunt or you just went you went to another trucking company <laughs> i uh i stayed with them for about two months uh you know and wow. <laughs> uh and i'm not saying i used them you know but i had a i had a opportunity right so okay. my father was in um father was on the pipeline with the union and uh he was like, Hey, you know, Shana, you know, I could I could pull you in over here, you know, I could get okay. you in, I'll talk to the union president, yada 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 and uh the next slot that comes up, you know, you can come in and this is kind of what you'll be making out here on the pipeline and with the numbers he gave me, being that I've only had my C D L at that time what two months i was like yes you know that that that's a blessing in disguise that was a blessing uh, you know, because grew- a lot of <laughs> yeah. the the experience you the, the experience you needed to jump into that you had to at least have like what about a year behind i mean behind you right yeah so yeah, i mean not not to say, not to- not to put you on the spot bro but you 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 was you was <laughs> fortunate to be in the right place at the right time, knowing the right people. Is it safe yes. to say that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's safe to up. say that. No, man. It's, uh, <clears throat> I consider myself lucky because not a lot of people that get involved in the trucking industry or come into the truck industry had would would have that same opportunity. Exactly. And I realize that. So, yeah. It's, it's, it's <laughs> not what you, it's not what you know. It's 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 kind of like who you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Especially when it comes to union, that that plays a big role. You know, you have to you have to have someone pretty much vouch for you to come on that job site. Okay, that's and what's um, up. and they have to speak to the union president. So uh, fortunately enough, my my dad was uh, already in there, and fa- uh, some other family, and uh, you know, and and got me in, and uh, it was a blessing because I learned. How to, you know, I, I drove some flatbed, drove day cab, sleeper, five ton, dump truck. Uh, I, I, you know, on the flatbed, then I, then I uh, did the uh, extended flatbed that extended up to like 80 feet. Okay. And uh, I just, I drove a lot of different equipment and gained a lot of experience. That's what's um, up. How, within, how old are, how old are you, bro? Uh, I'm 30, 32. Oh, 32. okay. You still. Be, uh, 33 in april <laughs> and and you still and, and see you you doing it right man are you married are are you married kids yeah yeah i'm uh i have my wife my uh beautiful wife and i have uh four kids back at home okay um, how, how do your wife feel about so, you uh, uh be are you an otr driver or are you you uh regional yeah. no i'm otr uh i chose to do the otr 
um, pretty much because if I was going to get involved in the lease, my opinion about it was I would have to go in, you know, head first and, and go after it. And me and my wife spoke about it and I spoke with it to my kids and I said, Hey, look, if, if, this is something that's going to break us apart or drive us apart. I'm not going to do it. I, I will not do it. I'll continue working for the same company. But if we can, you know, if, if this is something that, that will benefit from, you know, financially and, and everything else and put us on the right track and we can still have a good family life, then I'll, I'll go for it. And we talked for a couple of days about it. And my wife's like, you know, Shane, she's like, you know, I, I love you with all my heart. You know, you know, the kids, they love you. Obviously, we're going to miss you, but do what's right for, for our family. And, you know, we're very grateful, That's what's um, up. you know, if you choose to do that. Yeah. So with, so, uh, with, Hirsch, uh, with, with Hirschbach in, in, in this lease, what made you, what, what type of research that you did before you got into leasing? Um, I did uh, different companies i pretty much put up uh what was the google search term i use best leasing companies our best truck leasing companies and you know uh and then i it started pulling up different youtube videos and it was like you know you could you know you you had the option to buy a truck and i was like well if i buy a truck then you know, and, you know uh i have the credit but what if it just doesn't work out so that was a very scary thing for me because i didn't want to be locked into this humongous um payment and then be financially obligated if the loads and the freight just wasn't coming to me and still being new i concern myself still being new in the industry i just wasn't willing to take that kind of risk so i limited i pushed that to the side and then i looked at just leasing i seen that there's truck you know independent contractors that lease or it's not a lease to purchase so i was like okay you know that's fine they're they're you know they're leasing um and then i called a couple companies and they're like yeah you know you you had A, B, and C you have to do, and yada, 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 and some, some of it just wasn't matching up. So um, I looked up for lease to purchase and actually um, came across uh, Prime. I came across, you know, all these other companies, and uh, there's this one YouTuber that standed out, and uh, he, he brought up Hirschbach, and then I, I started Googling and researching, like, Hirschbach lease purchase, trying to get as much information as I can. And then I would filter out like, like information that I was like, just, okay, well, that just might be inflated a little bit. So let me dive a little bit deeper into it. So I started contacting certain YouTubers and um, trying to get their phone number so I could actually call to them and speak to them. And then um, I went to the Hertzbox actual website and uh, got that, I had a YouTuber give me a pay sheet explain the pay and the detail. And then when I talked to a recruiter, I said, Hey, I said, so this conversation isn't about me. You know, I'm, I'm willing to come right now. And then, uh, this conversation is more of a informational session, right? I'm trying to gain information from you. And by doing so, uh, I want to ask a lot of questions. So if you don't have time, I understand, but don't think at the end of this phone call, like I'm going to be signing this, this red dot and you're going to be putting me on a plane the next day. Okay. So, uh, the, the recruiter was actually really cool. His name was uh, Austin Stubbs, and he broke it down. He started sending me stuff by email as we were speaking on the phone. And I said, hey, man, I said, I want to know what is the fix, the fixed cost, okay? And so he gave me the fixed cost. I said, all right. I said, now I want to know what's, you know, like the fuel and everything else. I said, I know you had the 99 cents a gallon. I said, but what is the stipulation on that 99 cents a gallon? Because I already knew it in my head that, Obviously, I'm not going to be able to go wherever. I'm probably going to have uh, constituents on that nine-nine cents a gallon, and there was. Well, let I'm me. Glad I asked certain let, questions. Let me let me flip let me flip it this way. Uh, let's let's flip it from the actual call to what you're actually doing now. So what what okay. what is the uh, what is the cost of the truck that you that you pay every week? The cost, the fixed cost of the truck that you're paying is eleven. It's gonna be about eleven fifty. Now that depends on the year, year making model, right? So if uh, typically right now with Hirschbach, they it's it's a lot of internationals. However, they are going over to like majority Freightliners, but they do have Freightliners and they do have KWs. So I started doing research 
on that aspect as well. Like, okay, what's what's this about KW? What's the fix? You know, and, and diving into each different truck. And uh, fortunately, uh, you know, not well. You know, I'm not a big fan of our international. I really prefer the Freightliner Cascadias. But um, so the fixed cost to get back on track was almost lost myself there. Okay. The fixed cost is going to be about eleven to <laughs> about eleven hundred. So- the twelve hundred dollars, right? All right, and, so that's uh, uh that's a that, week. That that's six. Yeah, that's a week. They and, they uh, that's that's know, the it, pay. It sounds, that's it sounds scary. That's that's the pay. <laughs> that's the pay that's coming out of that's the pay, uh, just for the truck payment a week. So what about what well, about that's other for your bobtail insurance? That's for your other insurances as well. Okay, so twelve that's so twelve hundred for fit. for for the for for the truck itself. And for the uh, yep. insurance and stuff like that, what other pay? Yep. What yep. other pay that comes out? That comes out every week too. Okay, the other pay I would consider like a more fluctuating pay, and that is your fuel, mm-hmm. your fuel rate. So yeah, it's ninety nine cents, but you're going to get a fuel solution, and it's going to tell you how many gallons, where you can fill up at, yada yada yada. Um, so. Go buy because if not, you're going to be charged a little bit higher than the ninety-nine. You're not going to get the ninety-nine cents so, account rate. So you got to so, so uh, you got to go to their you you got to go to their fuel stop, or can you go to your go to any fuel stop that you deem fit for you? The for me, this is how I do it. And there's other truck drivers. They'll send you when you get that when you when you get that load sent over to you, and that. And that gets put onto you. You're going to get a fuel, what's called a fuel solution, and it's going to break down the different fuel stops. However, sometimes I choose a different route because it just works out better. Whether it's uh, going around the bad weather, or I don't want to go through all these cities, so I choose a little bit different. But I stay within the mileage rate, right? So, um, so when I uh, when I have that, I'll get on the phone with my uh, business part you know they're they're driver managers but i call them like my business partner because this is actually my my it's a real business you know and some people forget that so i i talk to my business partner and i say hey uh and about 20 miles down the road um i'm be stopping at this loves let's say a loves in gooman uh oklahoma and uh, i'm going to need to be fueled up right there and they're like all right shane and boom 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 they'll put it in the system and they'll say hey we're sending it over and i go okay how many gallons oh it's saying a fill which is 160 gallons so that's how i do it sometimes is i actually find a fuel station that i'm coming up on i'll give a quick phone call and all they do is they get on their computer and, and they they type away and i've really had no problem with that so you do have a little bit of flexibility. It's not like, well, you have to go to this fuel stop, and if you don't do it, then there's nowhere else you can go. And that's simply, like, not the case. Okay, okay. So so with this so with this lease and the amount that you get that's taken out of your paycheck every week, if you don't mind my asking, what's, what's, your, what's, your, uh, what's your rate, your cent per mile? Or are you doing the cent, cent per, per mile? mile? Yeah, it's cent per mile, and it's a sliding pay scale. So when you look at the sliding pay scale, the least amount that you'll make on uh, it's eighteen hundred uh, miles is a dollar per mile, right? So that's on eighteen hundred plus miles, and then it goes all the way to two dollars and sixty-two cents a mile. So, um, but that really on that end is going to be those short miles and you don't want to really be running like those short miles so my average consistency on my mileage rate has been about a buck uh, 15 that's pretty much when i look at my settlement and i average out when i'm making a per mile it's between a buck 15 and a buck 20. do you choose your own loads um no they do not have a load board however um like i said my business partner she'll uh she'll give me dispatch you know the planner will send over a load and then i'll call them up and i'll say hey i'm here this load is not making sense and i luckily i'm i'm you know i have a a driver manager that really works with me in that aspect and uh she'll look at it she'll be like yeah shane i i'm not a, this doesn't make sense either so we're going to turn it down and i'm get, i'm gonna get you a good load and uh next thing you know within 10 15 20 minutes 
I'm getting another load that makes sense. That makes sense not only with my, when I say makes sense, it makes sense with my hours, the way I run, where I'm currently at, you know, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of different things that come into play. And it's like I tell some of the guys that come on, it's like, don't be afraid to say no, because they're not going to punish you. You will get a phone call saying, hey, you know, why didn't you accept it? But as long as, you know, you made sense with why you're not accepting that load, you're going to get, you know, there's no such thing as being punished over here for load because there's plenty of freight. Um, so, uh, you know, it, you know, if it doesn't make sense, turn it down. And then I, I choose pretty much in the essence, I, I, I choose my runs, but I just know load board. Those runs get sent to me. Those loads get sent to me. All right, so this is uh this is ten ninety this is ten ninety nine base, so this this yeah, ain't sir. No, so this ain't no uh, so you don't get no company benefits and uh, I mean benefits, <laughs> you don't get no company benefits and nothing <laughs> like that. But it, uh, except for uh, except for the truck, the payment, and that's about it, pretty much. Yeah, then that yeah, that's pretty much um, you don't the, you know. Once again, you're you're an independent contractor, you're an owner operator, and you you know you have your own LLC. So in essence, you're not a company, you're not an employee, right? So um, you don't have those medical benefits and stuff like that. Now, are there companies that they they offer a company that gives those benefits? Yes, and uh, but it doesn't offer major medical. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so you have to kind of if, if health insurance is a big deal for you and you're the you know, one providing the health insurance. It's I suggest looking down and, and looking over what your really what your career goal is in the future. And if you just can't do it because you know you have kids and whatnot, and, and there you don't have anybody else to provide that health insurance, and that's a big thing. Then maybe maybe this isn't for you. But for my case, it, it was. I found um you know I, I did go through their insurance. And uh, that they offer for the owner operators, and uh, I I chose that path. And my wife also uh, has health insurance that okay. she gets. So uh, yeah, so, so it kind of it worked out for me, and that's why everyone's situation is is a little bit different. So, so and I know that's like the biggest question is about the medical insurance. Is this a walk away lease? Yes, it's a walk away lease. It's you know if you're not happy, it's not working out. You say, hey, um, with all due respect, uh, this just isn't working out for me, and you can walk away from the lease. Well, that's what's up, man. Well, hey, man, listen, uh, Shane, it's great, it's it's great to have you on to chop it up with you about uh about you know staying fit out here on the truck and talk about Hirschbach uh, lease uh, lease it's lease option to own, right? You you. You are buying yeah, technically you purchase. are buying you are buying the truck technically. How yes, many yes, how, how many a, it, yeah, technically. How many years how, how many how many years you got it out for? It's a 3-year contract that's set up with a balloon payment on the end. Okay. Did they did they do a credit check on you or anything like that or you was able to jump right no, into no. it? No, <clears> no. <throat> yeah, no, no credit check on on the truck itself. And uh, yeah, no uh, on a truck, no credit check on the individual. They don't dig that far. However, um, Hirschbach are is upping their requirements uh, just due to uh, incidents that some drivers have had over here. So there, um, it's not exactly you know open to you know maybe if you have a year in you know uh, you, you definitely have to have a year in now. But um, but yeah, it's uh, as far as that goes, no credit check. They don't look in your personal stuff, and uh, as long as you meet their basic requirements, they'll screen you. Uh, now they do like an interview process. As long as you meet the requirements, and if that all goes well, then you come here and you know, and, and you get a you get a truck. You sign a contract, which is a, a legitimate contract. You set up an LLC, and, and you go through that whole process. Yeah, they'll, uh, they'll help you with you know, all of that, yeah. right? <laughs> Yes, all yes. Right. They help you with all that. There is no upfront cost. You you don't you don't come out of pocket for nothing. Um, at first when you get here and you don't pay your truck payment 
I didn't pay my truck payment actually until the third week I was here. So that was okay. actually pretty nice. So they was able to they yep. was able to get you to save up a little bit. So that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Uh what's yep. um yep. Uh, you let me ask you this before before I let you go. And you, you don't have to be specific with it because you know don't have to be, but what's your what's your average pay? <laughs> what what's your My average with my average pay after everything now over the time I've been here, and that's after everything. That's with me taking the home time. It's going to be fourteen, uh, fourteen fifty is pretty much what I'm at. Okay, um, okay. And, but I I run, and that's that's a week. But I run, uh, I run a little bit different, and um, I did, you know, I did went home about what three times. So, uh, you know. Now, but I've been out here what six weeks now, and uh, that's kind of upped my average. And uh, because I always do an average to see, you know, because my biggest thing is if I'm going to be away from my family, if I'm going to be away from my kids, you know, you and might as well get paid good old, for it. it. I might as well get paid good for it. Because if not, it's just not worth it. Exactly. It's just not worth it. It's not worth. End. It's not worth the sacrifice, man. Well, no, no, because it's a lot of sacrifice. Well, this is uh this is uh my man's channel right here, Bees Knees Trucking. You guys could go and check him out. Make sure you go and subscribe to him. He has a, uh, you got about a nice uh nice little nice little channel here enough enough to get uh get the people interested in uh in in uh, Bees Knees. You you got an Instagram that you want everybody to know about? <laughs> No, I don't have an Instagram yet. Um, just uh, man, I've just been trying to concentrate on these videos, and my biggest thing that I've been trying to do is just providing great content and getting better with my videos a little bit each time. And it's just you know, it, it's been a blast because uh, especially this week, I think I've gained ten, ten, eleven subscribers within a matter of a couple of days. So that's that was uh, up, that's pretty nice for the support. That's what's yeah. up. Yeah, you got a you you got a shout out from uh from uh cursey uh shout out from the uh from the other guy too so yeah you you uh you definitely getting up there man you keep it up you you you'll be up there with the upper <laughs> echelon of uh of uh of youtubers it's not going to be it's not going to be easy but you you'll get up there man no. I, you got my support and that's and that's the thing yeah and that's the thing it's it's not like i'm looking to be like this big youtuber i just want to make sure you know i i'm putting out great content and, and people are actually they're they're learning some or even just if they're having a bad day they get to watch a video see me stutter a couple times or do something you know that makes them laugh and it's all worth it in the end because you know it, it's a form of entertainment and if you're not getting entertained by my channel by all means let me know because then i have to work on something gonna personally to but uh, gonna, have to, gonna have to switch it up <laughs> trust me you're gonna probably have to switch it up a few times man before before people actually be entertained on it all right, guys, this is yeah. my man Bees Knees Trucking right here. Shane, if you guys want to know more information about him, definitely go over to his channel, Bees Knees Trucking. Uh, he talks about nutrition, what he eats, what he does. Talks about Hirschbach, as he as he just did. So if you guys are interested in Hirschbach, definitely give him a, you know, give him a call or go to his we uh, website, go to his uh, channel, and, you know, he'll <laughs> tell you more about it. Yo, Bees Knees, man, thank you for joining me on the show this evening, man. You have a blessed evening. Hey, man. Oh, it's been a pleasure, dude. I've been uh, I've been watching your channel for a minute, so just just getting a phone call from you, it's it's really it's been an honor, man. It's, thank it's you. It's been an honor because I enjoy the content that you put out, and I, you know, to people that are just listening to it right now, like this guy is he's not fluffing you. He's not he's you know he, he gets to the point he puts out great content and. And that's what everybody needs. They don't need, you know, fluffness in their exactly. life. You know, yeah, I appreciate it, man. <laughs> Thanks for the accolades. I really do appreciate it. All right, man. Well, yeah, I'm about to go no ahead problem, and let you man. go so you can get some sleep. So me and you both could get up in the morning. And I'm definitely going to go yeah. ahead and start getting this exercise in more, man. You just inspired me. So yeah. I appreciate you, bro. All right. Hey, man, I appreciate you. And you stay safe out there. And everybody else. You know, I love you, and uh, stay safe, guys. You know, just safe travels, eat healthy, do things right, and be, be different. That's my motto, be different. Tenfold, brother. You take it easy, and I'll talk with you later, man. All right, bro.
All right, that was Bees Knees Trucking on the show. If you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell. Plus, hit the all button. I don't know why YouTube does that. That's just so crazy that you guys got to go through all these hoops and these hoops and trucks and all like that just to subscribe to a channel. God damn it, man. But hit that all button. And as I said before in my previous videos, all of it matters. So if you like, comment, share, and subscribe, it all matters. Yo, I am your humble host, Lockout Men. Thanks to my man, Bees Knees Trucking, for coming on to the show. And I will come back at you guys with another, another, another Lockout Men podcast. Y'all have a blessed evening, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace. Yo, you still on here? Yeah, yeah. I, was, uh, <laughs> I didn't know whether it hung up or not. Uh, no, no. I thought, I, thought you, uh, I thought you hung up, man. All right, go ahead and hang up, bro. Get out of here. <laughs> All right, man. Have a good one, bro. I appreciate it. All right, man. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Yeah, no problem, bro.